Good afternoon. Welcome to this meeting of the Community Development and Regulatory Services Committee as well as uh, the Joint MCDA Operating Committee. We have a couple of joint items we're going to take up and we'll do those first. Um, so I'll start with the MCDA consent item, which is the conduit bonds policy. Many of you know we've been having staff have been working on this for about five years. Um, and so I did have an opportunity to get briefed and read the report. I'm uh, happy to see there's so much agreement. So I'm going to move item number 11, which is the consent item for the MCDA operating committee. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That item is approved. Then we'll move on to the joint public hearing with the MCDA operating committee and the CD committee on item number one, uh, which is a public hearing. Mr. Reimer, welcome. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the committee. I'm Henry Reimer. I'm the Operations Director for the Community Planning and Economic Development Department. Uh, before you today are some housekeeping measures that stem from the MCDA transformation into CPED back in 2003. What we're doing here is cleaning up some things, merely housekeeping. These are not substantive. They're intended to eliminate redundant and obsolete ordinances and administrative procedures. Uh, what we're seeking to do is to repeal uh, Minneapolis Code of Ordinances, chapters 414, 416, 418, and 45, and the Development Objectives Procedural Document. Now, these ordinances only pertain to the MCDA. They're not used and they're not necessary. The Development Objectives Document was developed prior to the merger of the Planning Department with MCDA, creating CPED. Uh, to encourage better coordination between those functions. Now those functions are both residing in CPED. They're not necessary. Those functions are coordinated within CPED internally. Uh, we're also seeking to amend MCO uh, Chapter 422 and administrative procedures pertaining to program guidelines and project and financing plans as well as the MCDA bylaws. Now the Chapter 422 amendments harmonize uh, the MCDA provisions with the rest of the city. For example, we're recommending the elimination of the provision governing ethics because the city's ethics ordinance governs CPED employees. There is no need for a separate and different code of ethics for MCDA, empl MCDA employees. Uh, likewise, with the personnel section, MCDA has no uh, staff and no personnel. Some of the MCDA functions that remain are performed by CPED employees. Uh, so uh, other uh, uh, amendments reflect the current structure and functioning of the MCDA. And why are we preserving the MCDA? Well, we continue to own a small number of developments in the city under MCDA, and it retains some flexibility and authorities that we have granted under state law to MCDA, such as uh, small bond issuance. Uh, the MCDA bylaws and the administrative documents, uh, the changes recognize the creation of CPED, and the uh, amendments are intended to make those procedures consistent with current city council procedures. Uh, CPED, the finance department, city clerk's office, and the city attorney's office have all worked on these changes and all join in the recommendation. The heavy lifting of this has been done by Nikki Newman, Jeff Schneider, and Joan Matthew. And I thank them uh, for their work on this. And thank you. Are there any questions for Mr. Reimer on this report? Seeing none, I also want to thank you all for your hard work on this. It's uh, taking up an entire page of paper, so there's been a lot of work uh, that's been happening to streamline this process. We'll open the public hearing on item number one, um, which is a large housekeeping ordinance uh, as suggested by Mr. Reimer. Is there anyone here to speak to this issue? Anyone? Anyone? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Council Member Quincy. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to move approval of this item. Approval of item number one, sections one through seven, has been moved. Are there any further comments or questions? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? That item is approved. We'll then uh, adjourn the MCDA Operating Committee and move into the Community Development and Regulatory Services Committee. And uh, I'll note we've been joined by Council Member Cano, Quincy, Fry and Reich, which is a quorum of the committee. I'm going to move the consent agenda, which is items 12, 13, 14, 
15, 16. The two of these are setting public hearings. Others are our license and consumer services agenda that don't require a public hearing as well as, as, well as an agreement with the uh, University of Minnesota Board of Regents for traffic control surrounding games at the U.S. Bank Stadium. Are there any questions on items 12 through 16? Seeing none, all in favor of the consent agenda signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Those items are approved. Then we'll move to the remaining portion of our agenda, which is the public hearing agenda, starting with item number one. Mr. Winkelhake, welcome. Uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair, Council Members. Mark Winkelhake, Director of Development Finance. In the report before you, staff is requesting uh, the approval of modifications to the TIF plans for four <coughs> existing TIF districts. These four TIF districts were established back in the late 90s and early 2000s. Uh, in each case, the modification involves an update to the tax increment budget in the TIF plan, uh, which uh, the budget itself just simply shows the projected revenues and expenditures over the life of the TIF district. And as time has marched on, we have better projections of, of those revenues and those costs. Uh, these updates are administrative in nature. They are required by the TIF statutes and the Office of the State Auditor. And they allow the city to meet our financial obligations from each of these uh, four TIF districts. Notification of the modification was sent to neighborhood groups and other affected parties. And we received no comments or feedback. Uh, each of the modifications is attached to your report. Uh, it contains, contains a map if you're interested showing where these TIF districts are. Uh, there's also a resolution attached. And in two cases, the TIF districts are within the common project. So there's a slight modification that had to be made to the common project plan as well. Uh, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Are there any questions for Mr. Winklehake on item number two? Seeing none, ma'am, are you okay? Should we get you some water? Oh, yeah. I can get you some water if you need some. Okay, I just was getting worried. Okay. Um, no, you're, you're, you're welcome to cough. I just want to help you out if we can. <laughs> um, questions for Mr. Winklehake on item number two? Seeing none, thank you for your report. We'll open the public hearing on item number two. Is there anyone here to speak to this issue? Anyone? Anyone? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Council Member Quincy. Madam Chair, I'd like to move approval of item number two. Item number two has been moved for approval. Further comments or questions? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? That item is approved. We'll move on then to our Licenses and Consumer Services Division, public hearings. Mr. Wilson on item number three. Madam Chair, we have an application for a new liquor license class C1 with Sunday sales and a sidewalk cafe license by Dog and Butterfly LLC doing business as the bad waitress to be located at 700 Central Avenue Northeast. Um, there has been no previous uh, beverage alcohol uh, license at this site previously. It's in the Marcy Holmes neighborhood in Ward 3. Um, it will have interior seating for 96 persons and an outdoor area for 24 um, seats. Uh, two owners are Andrew and Mary Cohen. Um, they also own the Bad Waitress located at 226th Street East. Um, they've had an on-sale liquor license at that location um, for several years, uh, without issues, by the way. Um, the, the approved sidewalk cafe uh, plan will seat um, 24 persons, and it's on the south side of the premises. Uh, the plans of which have been approved by our traffic engineering department. Um, this is um, a new application, so it requires a public hearing today. Notices were mailed to residents and property owners within 600 feet of this location. We also notified the Marcy Holmes Neighborhood Group and the Northeast Minneapolis River District. We received four responses from that mailing and notification process, and, and uh, all four responses were in support of the application. <coughs> Um, staff finds this application meets all of our ordinances requirements and staff's recommendation is that the application be approved. Are there any questions for staff on item number three? Seeing none, we'll open the public hearing on item number three, which is a new business license. Uh, dog and butterfly doing business as bad waitress. Is there anyone here to speak to this issue? Andy, you want to say something?
Good afternoon, Madam Chair, Council Members. Um, just be brief. You know, we're we're looking obviously for support uh, of the approval of the application. You know, we're excited about moving into that corner of Marcy Homes and Northeast, and and um, you know we've enjoyed the three years that we've had at our current location, problem free. We feel like we're a, a positive member of the community, and the clients love us. No real issues, and so we're excited about expanding to number two. Yay, we're very happy for you. Is there anyone else here to speak to this issue? Anyone? Anyone? Thank you for being here today, Andy. Thanks. Council Member Fry. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I, I proudly uh, will move approval of this item. It's just a few blocks from where I live. That neighborhood, uh, the central Hennepin area, is, is definitely getting an influx of, of new restaurants and, and bars and entertainment venues. And it's, uh, it's really exciting to see the march of the excitement now proceed up Central Avenue and into Ward 1. So happily move approval and uh, thank you for your investment. Yeah. On the motion to approve, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That item is approved. We'll then move on to item number four. Thank you, Madam Chair. We have an application for a new on sale wine and strong beer license, Class A, um, for a theater by Firehouse Performing Arts Center, uh, doing business as the Hook and Ladder Theater at 3010 Minnehaha Avenue South. This site was the former location of uh, Patrick's Cabaret. They operate a theater there since uh, 1999, but did not have beverage alcohol service. Um, this is in the Longfellow neighborhood in Ward 9. We'll have seating indoors for 150 persons and no exterior um, alcohol service area. Um, the applicant Firehouse Performing Arts Center um, is a Minnesota nonprofit corporation properly registered. Um, this application does require a public hearing. We mailed 94 notices to residents and property owners within 600 feet. We also notified the Longfellow Community Council, the Longfellow Business Association, and the Lake Street Business Association. We received um, three responses from that notification process, all in support. This application appears to meet all of our ordinance requirements, and staff's recommendation is um, license approval. Are there any questions for Mr. Wilson on item number four? Seeing none, we'll open the public hearing on item number four, which is a new business, Hook and Ladder Theater uh, at 3010 Minnehaha Avenue. Is there anyone here to speak to this issue? Please step forward, state your name and address for the record. Um, thank you. My name is Chris Mozina. I'm the executive director of the Firehouse Performing Arts Center. And uh, we're here to request your support for this, uh, this license. Thank you Thank for you. being here today. Thank you. Is there anyone else here to speak to this issue? Please step forward, state your name and address for the record. I'm Christine Smith. I live in the Seward neighborhood. I live about five minutes away from the building. I am the building owner. I have owned that building since 1999, and I just want to point out that even though this is a new venture, I am still the building owner. And um, when we arrived, that neighborhood was pretty blighted. I remember with Patrick watching tumbleweeds go down Minnehaha Avenue. It's not that way today, and I'm hoping for your support to keep it that way. Thanks for being here today, Christine. Is there anyone else here to speak to this issue? Anyone? Anyone? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Council Member Cano. Thank you, Madam Chair. I would like to move this item forward. Item number four has been moved for approval. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? That item is approved. Thank you for being here. We'll move then on to item number five, Glamdahl Donuts. Mr. Wilson. Madam Chair, we do have an application by Glamdahl Donuts uh, LLC um, for a location at 519 Central Avenue Northeast. They are seeking an on sale wine and strong beer license, Class C1, with a sidewalk cafe. This is in the Nicollet Island East Bank neighborhood in Ward 3. We'll have interior seating for 48 persons, exterior seating for 12 persons. Tend to be open from uh, 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. Monday through Thursday, um, 7 a.m. to 1 a.m. Friday and Saturday. And the exterior hours will be the same as uh, the interior hours. The owners are Teresa Fox and Arwen Birch. Um, they have been operating Glamdahl Donuts at 2605 Nicollet since February of 2012, and this will be their second location here in Minneapolis. 
Um, their menu will uh, be expanded to some donuts. It will be, there will be a variety of sandwich offerings um, um, to allow them to comply with the, uh, become a definition of a restaurant. Um, a public hearing is required. We notified all residents and owners within 600 feet and the Nicollet Island East Bank Neighborhood Association in the Northeast Chamber of Commerce. We received no replies for or against this application. It appears to meet all our requirements and staff recommendation is to approve. Are there any questions for Mr. Wilson? I was just pondering if they were closer to me, how many more donuts I'd be eating, and that would be dangerous, very dangerous. I know the glam dolls are here, so I'm going to open the public hearing and invite them to come up and speak. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Show Sailor. Arwen Birch, Teresa Fox, we're the owners, and uh, we've wanted to be a part of this neighborhood since, you know, glam doll was an idea, so we're really hoping to gain your support here. Yeah. Thanks for doing what you do. Yeah. It's great. We're happy to do it. Love it. Have fun. Is there anyone else here to speak to this issue? I know everyone wants to get up and tell them how much they love them. So <laughs> anyone? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Council Member Fry. Thank you, Madam Chair. Arwen and Teresa, you're, uh, we really, really appreciate you being in the neighborhood. Uh, you know, you're extraordinary business owners. Obviously, you've got an excellent model. I think you're going to get tons of traffic from me specifically. I live pretty much right across the street. Uh, and so, um, yeah, I, I think you've, you've got a great model, not just for purposes of generating revenue, but also for purposes of, of doing community. Um, and so thank you. I'm very supportive. I happily move approval. Approval has been moved of item number five. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That item is approved. Thank you for being here today. We'll move on to item number six, Mr. Wilson. Thank you, Madam Chair. We have an application for a extended hours of operation license for a gasoline convenience station um, known as Pump and Munch at 4401 Nicollet. They currently are licensed for gasoline, food grocery, tobacco dealer, and off-sale beer. Um, they're in a C1 zoning district and they're currently allowed to be open from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. Thursday through Sunday and from 6 a.m. until 11 p.m. on Friday and Saturday. They are seeking a one hour extension of hours of operation to be open during the week until 11 p.m. and until midnight on Friday and Saturday. Um, this application requires a public hearing. Um, we did notify um, all residents and property owners within 300 feet of this location and also the Southwest Minneapolis Business Association and the Kingfield Neighborhood Association. We received quite a, um, uh, a lot of responses to this notification process. We received 10 responses, three are in support of the application and then seven are opposed. Um, because of the proximity of this facility to um, many single family homes, uh, local residents are concerned about noise, traffic, litter, um, hangout behavior, um, lights from the station being on late at night. Um, because of the negative response um, was so great in this application, we contacted the owner of the station and spoke with them and um, let them know of the negative responses and asked him if he would consider reducing his application from midnight on Friday and Saturday to just 11 p.m. on um, seven days a week um, from 10 p.m. a week. So, and he agreed to that and amended his application. So this application now will be for um, extended hours of operation from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. seven days a week. This application um, will expire and on May 1st and he will have to renew that license and we can review um, any issues that might have been brought up since that time or any complaints. So based on that review, um, staff's recommendation is that we, you re approve this extended hours of application license, 4401 Nicollet, to increase hours to 11 p.m., seven days a week. Are there any questions for Mr. Wilson on item number six? We'll then open the public hearing on item number six, which is an extended hour <laughs> license at Pump and Munch. Is there anyone here to speak to this issue? Anyone? Anyone? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Council Member Quincy. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to move approval of the staff recommendation for number six. 
Item number six has been moved for approval. Further comments or questions? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That item is approved. We'll move on to the remaining item on this portion of the agenda, which is item number seven. Mr. Wilson. For Utapel's Brewing, by my house. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Our next application is by Uda Pills Investment LLC, doing business as Uda Pills Brewing Company at 225 Thomas Avenue North. They are seeking an on-sale liquor license with Sunday sales for a tap room, Class C2, and an off-sale malt liquor growler license. This is on the Glenwood Inglewood um, factory complex um, at 225 Thomas Avenue North. This this. Uh, microbrewery will have seating for 155 patrons and there will be no outdoor area or service at this time. Public hearing is required. We notified all persons within 600 feet of this application and this public hearing. We also notified the Harrison Neighborhood Association. We received one response from our notification. That response was in support. This application appears to meet all of our requirements and our recommendation is that you approve the application. Are there any questions for Mr. Wilson on item number seven? Seeing none, we'll open the public hearing on item number seven, which is Udabel's Brewing. Is there anyone here to speak to this issue? I know you're here. Thank you for being here. Um, we're excited to be here. It's been a long road. Um, I just want to say thank you. Um, I appreciate all the work that's gone into getting us to this point. And if you were to approve us today, it would be Personally, a trifecta for me since I live about a block from Bad, New Bad Waitress and about three blocks from the uh, the new uh, donut place. So uh, to me, it'd be a win-win-win. So I hope you approve <laughs> us, and I, I hope you will all be patrons. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Is there anyone else here to speak to this issue? Anyone? Anyone? Seeing none, I'm going to close the public hearing and move approval myself. I know if Councilmember Yang was here, he would just be so pleased and so excited about um, this transformation. Many of you know this is in the old Glenwood Inglewood location uh, in the Harrison neighborhood on the Bryn Mawr boundary, uh, a place that not many people wanted to invest in and it really took a vision of a group of people who all live in the city pretty much uh, to come and say we can do something great here. And Councilmember um, Yang has been a very strong supporter as has my office and we're just really proud and excited about the step you've taken because you believe in the city and you believe in this location. It's easy to open a business in some locations. It's very hard to do it in others. You guys have really stepped up and I'm just really proud of you and excited about it. On the motion to approve item number seven, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? That item is approved, and hopefully you guys will be on track to open in December, it sounded like, right? Uh, we're hopeful. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we'll then move on to our last remaining item on the agenda, which is our quasi-judicial item number 10. I will note that items 8 and 9 are on the agenda but are going to be postponed one cycle uh, due to the fact that our um, committee was a week late because of the election. So uh, those need to be re-noticed or noticed more properly. So I will move to postpone items eight and nine. One cycle, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Those items are postponed and turn over to the chair to Council Member Fry on item number 10. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, item number 10 is a rental dwelling license for 5420 44th Avenue South. It's an informa pauperous motion before the Minnesota Court of Appeals. An informa pauperous motion basically is means that um, the, the individual who is uh, applying uh, does not have the money to continue and to pay the court fees. And so they are asking and requesting that those fees be waived. Um, uh, Mr. Um, Magrino. Is, is you here to present? It doesn't look like it. Mr. Fussy, would you like to just give a brief rundown? Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair, and you summarized the issue uh, correctly. Um, in, in Mr. Magrino's stead, I can present the staff's position. This is kind of a rare item. I believe it's the second time uh, that the council has been ordered by the Court of Appeals to first give its opinion or to weigh in on a request for to proceed in form of papyrus by an appellant. In this case, that's uh, Mr. Margo Capax, and he is appealing this council's revocation of his rental license at 5420 44th Avenue South. 
Um, he's appealing that to the Minnesota Court of Appeals, and there is a filing fee uh, attached with that, payable to the Court of Appeals, that I believe is $550. He has uh, submitted an affidavit for proceeding in form of papyrus to have those fees waived based on his lack of ability to pay those fees, um, and the Court of Appeals has uh, remanded it to this city to give its position regarding that. I will very briefly uh, sketch out what the staff's position is on that, and basically the reasons that the staff is requesting or it's the staff's position to uh, deny that, that this committee should deny the uh, request of Mr. Capex is that, number one, um, he does not allege to be in receipt of any form of public assistance that's means-tested. He is not represented by any legal services, any legal aid type organization. Um, the public record indicates that he owns four properties just in Minneapolis, so three in addition to the property that he is appealing the revocation of its rental dwelling license. And also in his um, affidavit, uh, which has been provided to the, uh, this committee, uh, although he does list a number of debts, he also states that he has $68,000 cash in hand. And so based on those factors, it would be the staff's request that the committee deny the, the uh, request to proceed in form of papyrus. I am unaware of whether Mr. Capex has been, is present here. I know that uh, it, he was notified of uh, this, this hearing, and I believe it would be proper to at least uh, open it up to him for some very brief remarks uh, regarding his request uh, if he is present. Thank you, Mr. Fossey. Before we open it up to the public hearing and Mr. Capex specifically, um, do, are you aware of the, whether Mr. K, are you aware whether Mr. Capex has hired a private attorney? Uh, it's my understanding, uh, Mr. Vice Chair and committee members, that he's proceeding pro se. He has been um, a frequent litigant uh, regarding some rental license issues in the past, and he's always proceeded uh, pro se. Uh, thank you. Is Mr. Uh, Capex here today? I'm going to open the public hearing specifically for Mr. Capex. Is Mr. Capex here today? Is Mr. Capex here today? Seeing that he's not, I will close the public hearing uh, and I will move the staff recommendation, which is to, de to deny the motion for informal pauperous. Um, I, if you have four rental properties that you own, you're obviously correct collecting rent on them. Um, it's not like you're entirely destitute, and generally an inform of pauperous motion is used for someone who's homeless or in extremely dire straits. And with 65000 in the bank, I don't see that here. So I agree with staff entirely. I uh, move approval of the uh, staff recommendation. All those in approval, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, say no. Uh, that motion passes. Mrs. Ma Madam Chair. Uh, thank you, uh, Councilmember Fry, there are no further items on our agenda, so we stand adjourned. I want to note that the next meeting, which is going to be Tuesday, um, will have quite a lengthy agenda. So it's important <coughs> for folks to book out you know, a, a good amount of time because of the public hearings and other items that are coming before us as we get close to your end. Thank you. Irene, I'm going to give you these back.